Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Yarn Flakes podcast. My name is Audrey and this is a nitty yarny podcast from the southwest of France. Hi, thank you so much for joining me for this new episode. I hope you're doing very well. I hope you will not hear the wind roaring. Um, but yes, I have a little episode for you uh, this time with three projects that I'm very excited to talk about. It will be very motif intense, very textured, very lace. Um, because I have a new pattern release to announce, which is the top that I'm wearing, and two new works in progress, um, which I'm very excited to share. And yes, so I'm going to start right away. You can find timestamps to all the different sections of the podcast in the description down below. So if you want to skip anything or find a project in particular, you can look at that. I also put links to everything that I talk about, the patterns and the yarns that I will be mentioning as well as links to my social media, my patterns for sale, and my Patreon page, if you would like to support uh, my work and get access to some behind the scenes content. Um, yay! So let me start right away. I have a new design to announce, which is the cardigan that I'm wearing. And it is the Pestile cardigan, which is a light spring summer cardigan which is knitted top down so it is a raglan cardigan with a v-neck some garter stitch finishing touches and you have lace pockets and let me show you the lace motif very geometric and this is as well on the sleeves so the back is all stuck in it you have the raglan details as well as garter stitch and here is the sleeve the lace starts right here and it goes all along the sleeves so yeah that's how it looks like again as as a lot of times, <laughs> this is as often, this is a pattern that can easily be adjusted. The main thing is you can remove the pockets, they are knitted separately, so you can actually use them as a swatch uh, for your lace and then they are basically seamed around here. So there is a video tutorial in the pattern showing you how to seam it and you can make two pockets, one or none at all, it depends what you prefer. You could make ribbing edges if you prefer and mainly you can of course make the body longer <laughs> if you want mine is rather cropped but that's normal <laughs> for me and you can also make the sleeves longer you can make them shorter or like three quarter lengths long sleeves uh, you can have a look at my testers version some of them did that and in the pattern basically i give uh, some advice on how to handle it um, my sleeves are rather loose and I didn't do any decreases before the little garter edge here um, but basically if you do want to slightly tighten the lace at the edge of your sleeve which I recommend doing as long as your sleeve go past your elbow it's better <laughs> in my opinion to slightly tighten it and you have the decreases all written out in the pattern all the tips for for that are are included and yeah, I'm really happy to see some versions with long sleeves. I think it looks really fun. Um, so yeah, if that's what you would like to do, it works totally fine. And yes, so this is knitted in fingering to sport weight yarn. Um, it's best to use something that is a bit light and has some drape but not too much because <laughs> if it has too um, much drape, if it gets a bit sloppy, of course the button band and things uh, will not hold their shape very well so unless you're sure that you want to keep it um, open and even omit the button bands so the the neck band is picked up at the end all around and i put four buttons but you can of course adjust that depending on the length of your cardigan what you prefer but if you are doing button don't pick something that has too much drape and yes the yarn that i used is alblino by shopper wooler so this is a yeah, wool and linen blend basically and 
this is a collaboration with uh, a French yarn shop, which is actually a little truck. <laughs> She's a yarn truck um, around the Alsace region, which is the French region neighboring, one of the French region neighboring Germany. And she just goes around different uh, festivals and markets with her yarn truck. And um, yeah, she contacted me a year or so ago uh, to see if I would like to create a pattern with the yarns that she carries. And yeah, it was right on time <laughs> where I had this idea and I didn't have the yarn to match it. And so she, she should, ah, <laughs> I'm going to be able to speak. She suggested, she suggested uh, this yarn, uh, which is really lovely. I've tried a couple wool and linen blend and this one is much softer than, <laughs> than the other ones, because as you can see, you have some blips of the linen, like the the plant fiber that are peeking out, which makes like a nice little heathered effect because it doesn't take the color the same way. And um, there's a little bits, it's like a tweed thing, basically. And sometimes it can be quite rough, but this one, once it was blocked, it is very, very soft and smooth and next to skin friendly. And I do have some more because she sent me another colorway as well. And I think um, it would make a really nice summer or spring shawl, uh, something like this. But um, yes, so uh, difficulty wise. So the lace is not a complicated one. It's simple yarn overs and decreases. You have some um, centered decreases here, but basically it's not the execution of the lace, which is execution <laughs> of the lace, which would be an issue. If you do make a pocket, or I recommend that you make one either way, uh, just to swatch. Uh, well, you will already be familiarized with the lace motif and you can see how geometric is it is. You will be able to tell the, you can see here the lines going at the center, which help you uh, mark your place very easily. And so this is not really the difficult point of the pattern. What is a bit more uh, maybe tricky if you are not familiar with it, it's if you have not been knitting a raglan before or been comfortable reading charts. So that's the two things. Uh, it's better if you know how raglans work in general and it's better if you're comfortable reading charts because the pattern is fully charted. The thing is you only have to follow one chart at once and the whole chart is made for each size. So the pattern is quite long. There's a lot of pages because uh, there's lots of individual charts. And um, this way you don't have to fiddle with the lace yourself. You don't have to shape it. You don't have to follow several charts at once. It's all in one chart, which makes it easier but you do need to know how to read a chart flat and in the round as well. Um, yeah, trying to catch my breath. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's kind of the thing uh, that I would recommend if you're, if you're comfortable with those two elements, uh, if you have done a bit of lace before, like I said, this is not a complicated one. The one area which requires a bit of attention is where you pick up for the sleeves. So you knit the raglan flat and you put the, sle the, the sleeve stitches on, <laughs> mixed up sleeve and lace. You put the sleeve stitches on um, hold and then when you go and pick it up to knit the rest of the sleeve in the round, you um, basically you pick up some stitches at the underarm and then you need to knit across those held stitches in lace pattern and so you need to follow the chart a specific way so that the lace is aligned and so that the beginning of the round is then under the arm for the rest of the sleeve it's not complicated you just have to do what the pattern says so yeah basically if the if you're someone who i know lots of knitters are like this if you someone if you're someone who reads okay blah 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 uh, <laughs> pick up the sleeves, okay, I know how to do this, and you don't actually look at what the pattern says, don't do this <laughs> in this area. You really need to specifically 
uh, follow what the pattern says for this first uh, time where you go back to the sleeve stitches. Uh, but yeah, besides this, it's uh, rather straightforward and, and easy to follow and easy to modify to your own pace, like I said. And yeah, I, uh, I hope you like it. I haven't been able to wear it yet because I wanted it to look <laughs> rather decent for, for you to be able to show it to you on the podcast. Uh, and yeah, so I don't know yet how I can... Well, I kind of like it with this top, even though this top is quite loose and I, under the arm it's a bit... I need to <laughs> fiddle with it a little bit to put it nicely. But um, yeah, this is, uh, this is how it looks. And I hope you enjoy it. And it's now available on all of my pattern shops. And on Ravelry, there is, as usual, a little discount code. If you need it, it will give you 15% off with the code uh, PECIL. So P-E-O-E-C-I-L-E. -E. It's a bird. Because uh, birds? <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was bird-like. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it. Leave it a bit open because I usually do like to wear my cardigans open most of the time. But um, yeah, so that's it for the first really spring garment, uh, spring pattern of this year, which uh, I hope you will enjoy. I have some really nice things planned and uh, this one, this one I really, really like. And yeah, I'm going to move on to some work in progress. And the first one I'm going to share is a personal work in progress is one that I started because I wanted to get on with knitting myself some summer summer things for this year and I've been wanting to knit the climbers top by Irmian Designs for a while so Irmian Designs if you don't know she makes really beautiful um mostly textured designs. She has lots of cables, lots of twisted stitches, motifs, and I really like what she does. She's really good at implementing uh, a pattern and like making, positioning it in a certain way on a garment and it's really beautiful. I really like her work. And she released the climber's top I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but I've been wanting to make it ever since. And it is a little top with a cable motif which you can see here and it's knitted in decay weight her sample is worked in a wool and silk blend and you can see it's very simple cables simple four stitches and three stitches crossings and yeah it's very elongated this is one repeat and a half I think the pattern tells you to do four repeats total and at the same time measure to see how long it is before starting the to split for the armholes. I think I'm going to do only three repeats because if I look at the pattern she does move on because you repeat that motif and then it turns into something a little bit more simple, a bit more of a simple medallion on the upper body. And if I look at the picture, uh, she seems to shift right when she splits for the armholes. So this is what I'm going to do. And if I do four repeats of the cable, the top is going to be way too long for me. So like this is, um, this is one repeat. So it's quite a lot. So I'm only going to do three and it's still, adjustable is just that it's sliding so you have to repeat this motif and then you have a transition thing and then you can repeat endlessly the top part so it's still adjustable I just prefer if my shift from one mo motif to the next matches the the one in the designer sample and it's really pleasant to knit, really simple. Uh, you have some stock in it at the sides. And yeah, uh, I'm knitting it rather slowly because I'm taking my time with it. I am using, and that's most of my <laughs> issue, um, I'm using this, which is the Tencel Cotton Yarn from Katya Yarns. Katya is a Spanish brand. 
and so I do really like um, Tencel Lyocell blended yarns. I've used quite a few and the thing is Tencel it's really nice because it gives instantly a lot of drape. It makes anything so fluid and so soft a bit too much and this one has 67% Lyocell. I, I think Lyocell, Lyocell is the name of the actual thing. So if you don't know what Tencel Lyocell is, it's a substitute for for viscose, basically bamboo rayon things. Uh, it's a bit more um, environmentally friendly, even though this <laughs> these sort of things are never black and white, and it's never completely the case. Um, but uh, initially, it's it's a wood. Thing, but it's a cellulose synthetic thing. Some of them are made from algae, some of them are made from different things. But I think that Lyocell Le is the name for the fabric and Tencel is the registered trademark. It Maybe it's the opposite. <laughs> if, I forgot, I'm sorry. If you remember or if you know more about this, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to write it down in the comments so we can uh, all know. But this one has 60% seven percent and 33 percent cotton so it's mostly tensile and so it's mostly very soft and slippery and flimsy and maybe a bit too much i'm not sure um obviously because it's a summer top the cables are not supposed to be as defined and plump and tight as uh in a winter thing but it is quite uneven the thing is when i knit with a very slippery slippery yarn my gauge tends to loosen like i i have a particular grip that is not good <laughs> and um my gauge is already tighter than what it's supposed to be so my top will be smaller than intended but i already have some yeah consistency issues and some areas are too loose i do think it's going to even out when blocking and if not, I will just pull the, the threads where it makes holes, you see, this sort of things. Yeah, it's just normal when you do cables, but with this particular fiber, I find that I'm exaggerating those, those flaws. And they're very visible uh, to me, but I trust, I trust the water. <laughs> I trust that it will smooth things out. But yeah, so you do the cables back and front. And yeah, I um, I haven't read through the pattern completely, which is bad. Um, but the sleeve, so it's slightly dropped uh, sleeve and the ribbing edges doesn't go all around. Basically, it stops at the underarm and it lays quite flat. And it's an interesting, very neat um, finishing touch. And I haven't checked yet uh, how it works exactly. I'm just watching my little fruit trees getting uh, completely wrecked by the wind, uh, which is lovely. Um, I think I've said everything about this project. Um, I've gotten distracted, uh, which is why it's going a bit slowly. I have started a, a project motivated by color, which I will show you in the next episode, I'm spreading my projects because I will also, I should be starting a secret project soonish, which I won't be able to show you. So, um, yeah, you will see in the next episode the thing that distracted me. But in the meantime, I do want to show you my new design in progress, which I'm really, really happy about and I'm really proud of it, which uh, is not a thing that I often. Um, and so I've been wanting to make a full-on lace mid-season like lightweight jumper and completely all over lace so see-through the idea was for it to be worn with a tank top or a bralette under it and um, for it to be more of a early autumn spring garment and um, to be with three-quarter sleeves and complete lace all over. 
I've been wanting to do this for a while and I have bought, I think it was last year, some yarn from French Dyer the Woolly Skein. And this is a base that is a summer base. It's 40% linen, 60% cotton. And it's fingering weight. It has 350 meters per 100 gram. And it's great. Um, so I have tried a few cotton linen blends, which it highly, it's very variable. Uh, one that I tried was very irregular, like it was making a fabric that looked very rustic and nice, but it was not really well defined because it has mostly linen. And then I also tried uh, the Bo Bohème base by Fonti, which is a French mill. And this one was a decay weight and was very dense. And I was, I'm not aware of any other fine, uh, basically, cotton linen blend fingering way. And I don't know if she's going to keep carrying this base, if she's going to re-dye some for this summer. I hope that she will, uh, because it's great. It's very smooth. So that's the thing. It, it really is really well balanced. Basically, it's super smooth because of the cotton, but it's also kind of light and drapey. And so I meshed the two things together, my lacy jumper idea and this yarn, and I'm so, so happy with the result. So beware, this is lace intense. <laughs> and I am really, really happy. So the thing is, I'm knitting this at a very tight gauge. Well, it's not overly tight. I thought I would have to go tighter to get the visual effect I wanted. But it's actually just 27 stitches per 10 centimeter, which is not that weird for a fingering way. And I'm reaching this myself with three millimeter needles. But look how neat it is. Look at the ribbing, the twisted ribbing. I am really, really liking it. And yeah, so this is something that takes a while um, and because it's so tight and because it's all over lace. But I'm very happy with the balance that it has because even though it's tight, it's all over lace, the motifs themselves are rather simple. It's only eyelets and simple decreases. There's no twists. There's no complicated decreases and, and things. And it's a very short repeat. It's only eight rows. And so there's that motivating factor, which is like one more, one more, one more. And so I end up knitting it faster than I thought and faster than I should, because if I knit it too much, then because it's a yarn that doesn't have any elasticity, I might um, hurt my hands a bit, which often happens in the summer with the summer yarns, basically. So I'm trying to, I'm arguing with myself, basically, trying to slow down on this and at the same time wanting to keep knitting it because it's very, very fun. And so this is what it looks like. So it's going to be a bottom up drop shoulder sweater and I already graded it. Can you believe this? I very rarely do this, but I did grade it before starting my sample, which is really nice because now I just get to enjoy knitting my sample and then it will almost be ready. There's gonna be a center panel basically, so it's front and back and basically this here is going to be in the center. This, if you can see, basically this this motif here, it's like it's supposed to be together and the actual motif is the little um, triangular thing here. But I split it up because what I wanted to show was the V in reverse tokenet. And there's this motif, which I really like. This is made every row, which means that when I will be splitting the front and back, because this is going to be drop shoulder, like, did I say it? I'm not sure. You're going to have some lace on the wrong side rows. So this will probably be the difficulty of the pattern, even though it's only some yarn overs and some uh, decreases in here and in here. And it's rather geometric as you see, but the rest of the lace is only on right side rows. So every other rows as I'm in the round. So this will be the center and then on the sides and which will increase with grading is 
this. These two. So this is like a very basic, you know, that one that has the decreases on the side. And this is the fake eyelet cable thingy, the mock cable, which I really like using. This is, for example, the thing that I used in the 90 cardigan and in the some socks that I made as well. And I really, really like how it looks. And this will be as well on the sleeves. This will be the lace repeat on the sleeves and which will be picked up and knitted in the round. And it's so much fun. <laughs> I really like it. Um, I'm really happy with how it, both how it looks and how fun it is to knit, you know. We all have like different, um, different limits in terms of what is worth the effort. Like never knit something that you don't enjoy knitting, you know. And yeah, for me, I know I usually enjoy things that are a bit too intense for a lot of other people. Um, and for me, this is like really hitting the mark because it has a result that I love and it's enjoyable to knit despite the tight thing. It's, um, for me, it's completely, um, completely on the nose with what I enjoy doing. And I'm really happy with it. Initially, I thought I would um, release this around August, uh, but considering how it's going, I do want to leave my testers more time, <laughs> as much time as, pos as possible. And I don't know yet whenever uh, when I will be able to launch the test net. I hope to launch it at the beginning of May. So I think it will actually be released around September. So it will be the first end of summer, beginning of autumn project. And yes, it's been a while since I had a really intense, um, really intense knit. It's kind of like the, the legacy of the Atlantica sweater, if you want, but the spring summer version. So yeah, this is what I'm working on at the moment. And I'm shifting and trying to mix in different projects so that I don't um, hurt my hands because I just want to keep knitting it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is what I'm working on at the moment. I think that's going to be it for this episode and I will see you again in a couple of weeks to continue the trend of summer projects to project. End of the episode. The not that my elocution was any better at the beginning, to be honest. So that's a bit of um, that's a bit of a lie here. But <laughs> yeah, dogs are barking. So I will see you next time. Have a lovely rest of the day and evening. I will see you in another episode. <laughs>